Hello y'all, welcome back to another video dedicated to help you break out of the cycle of toxic behaviors and relationships in your personal and romantic area of your life. In today's video, we're going to be talking about why fearful avoidance tend to constantly break up whenever they're in relationships. Now I do want to note this is a generalized behavior, so not all fearful avoidance are going to be constantly breaking up in the relationships. However, if this behavior relates to you where you're constantly getting upset in arguments and just saying I'm over it, let's break up, and this has been a cycle in your relationship over and over again to the point where your partner is now exhausted and this video is for you and make sure you watch till the end to understand how to start breaking out of this cycle of constant breaking up when it comes down to the reason why fearful avoidance are constantly breaking up it's because one they have a huge distrust wound and whenever this trust wound is triggered they feel the need to just pull apart and give up as we talked about that all or nothing mindset springs up and they think that it's better to just end the whole relationship than work through it. I do want to note that sometimes fearful avoidance will do this on purpose just to get a rise out of their partner. However, in this video, we're going to be talking about if you're doing this unintentionally and you actually want to heal. At the end of the day, if you're a victim of this behavior and if this is something that's mentally straining you, you can't handle the constant breakup, that's okay. Your boundaries and your thresholds and what you decide to work on in the relationship is personal to y'all. Because we're not justifying this behavior, we're understanding it so that if you really do want to grow, then this video is going to help you do that. But with that said, when you notice this distrust wound come up, there's a couple of internal narratives that you're probably telling yourself. Number one, I'm unlovable and I don't deserve this other person's love, so I'm just going to push away. Or number two, I don't trust that this relationship is safe enough to move forward and I would rather break it up first before they break up with me. Because in this moment, the fearful avoidant feels so vulnerable, it's easier for them to just push away and put their walls up. However, if you've noticed, it's truly exhausting to be in this cycle and most times fearful avoidance don't actually want to break up in this moment. Instead, what they actually want is just to feel safe to feel seen, to feel heard, to feel understood, and feel like the relationship is not going to break. And in order for that to happen, it's important to create a safe environment for communication in the relationship. For most fearful avoidance, growing up was really painful because they saw love as unpredictable. Constant breakups, constant questioning of divorce, constant chaos of yelling and screaming, and they never saw love as safe. Rather, every time they saw conflict come up in a relationship, it was paired with aggressiveness, yelling, screaming, and so they never felt safe to truly express their emotions. When you don't have a good relationship with conflict and conflict resolution, this will come up in your future relationships, and now whenever you see conflict, it's very uncomfortable for you. In order to rewire and reshift that narrative that conflict is bad, or I can't trust this person, or every single time we're gonna have an argument, it's gonna make or break a relationship, it's important to take a second to pause and realize that all of this inner narrative that we're telling ourselves is what we learn from our caregivers. And it's not necessarily true because the truth is any boundary or emotion that you share isn't going to make or break the relationship unless that relationship was unstable to begin with. So if you're someone that's struggling with this distrust wound, it's important to remember in those moments that you are loved and you deserve to be loved. And this conversation, a mistake, or a problem isn't going to push the other person away if they have the emotional capacity to navigate the conflict that is. And not only this, but what you really want to do is start creating that inner trust within yourself and creating a safe relationship with conflict with yourself. Every relationship starts with you and if you start creating a healthy relationship with being able to sit with your emotions, feel comfortable being in them and just allowing yourself to see, hear, and understand yourself, it will be a lot easier for you to do that in your relationships in the future. Of course, there's still going to be a learning curve, but what you're doing here is that you're familiarizing yourself with these uncomfortable emotions and realizing that it's okay to feel this way. It's not going to destroy you. It's not permanent. All these emotions are temporary. And as long as you take time to give yourself grace and compassion, you will move through them. And the more you create the safe energy within yourself, the more you can trust yourself to navigate these hard and uncomfortable emotions. A couple of ways that you can start trusting yourself is getting to know who you are as a person. I always tell my clients, in order to love or trust anyone, you need to know them, right? So who are you outside of general demographics? 
what energizes you what are your values what are your non-negotiables and the more you know who you are the more you can create decisions and choices that align with your values and what energizes you and not only this but this will also strengthen your character and give you a good idea of who you are when no one else is looking and it's the same thing with other people when you're trying to trust other people you want to think about who they are when no one else is looking how they show up for themselves how they show up with day-to-day -day people because someone's character says a lot more than how they show you who they are in those couple of seconds when you're looking at them and instead of seeing conflict as a bad thing that will push each other away think of conflict as an opportunity to actually understand see hear and grow together when a couple is able to navigate conflict successfully and they're able to find a solution together it really strengthens and grows the relationship and creates more trust within the relationship but i hope this helps if you're looking for more in-depth guidance book a call with me using the link in the description below subscribe for more and as always you got this